Welcome listeners and viewers. This is our very first video supplement to the Fiber Beat. In our first episode, Schoolhouse Socks, we talked with Meg Swanson and Amy Dachin. We talked about the bar none or the barless increase that uh, Meg was so excited about and we'll be showing that today on the video. We also uh, talked about Icelandic wool, which Schoolhouse Press was one of the first to distribute in the United States. And finally, um, we're going to talk about and show the moccasin sock in its construction and where you can find that pattern. So, thanks so much for joining us. Let's get to it. All right, on this swatch, I started out illustrating both types of increases, both the barless increase and the traditional bar increase. She described the process of knitting the first stitch and then going into the back of the stitch as if to purl. And that creates this series of increases down here on the bottom. What I discovered in looking at these a little more closely is that there is a little bit of a hole that develops. You can sort of see my finger peeking through it right there. And I'm not quite sure I like that, but if you are a fairly tight knitter, I don't think it will make that much of a difference. Now that is in contrast to the bar increase, which is over here. The bar increase creates this little bitty bar right there, which you can see sort of there, 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 and there. And the bar less increase was supposed to eliminate that. Um, I played with it a bit more and up a bit higher. Instead of slipping that stitch as if to purl, I sort of twisted it as I slipped it. And what I inadvertently created was another variation of the bar increase because when you knit into the back of the stitch, you twist it. So I'm going to show that to you on this sample swatch here. And I'm doing these increases three stitches in from the edge. So do three stitches. And then here we come with the increase. You knit the first stitch and then slip the needle in as if to purl and just slide it off. And then you keep going all the way across. Okay, so through the magic of video, I purled back and you can see that the, this increase creates a tiny little hole there, or what appears to be a hole. Um, and you can really see it dramatically down here along this little edge right here. Now what I tried to do to sort of correct that was the following. So doing the increase three stitches in from the edge. That's so three stitches. So knit the first stitch. And instead of just going into the stitch as if to purl and sliding it off, I actually went in the back of the stitch and slid it off. And what I was doing is I was twisting that stitch. And if I knit a little bit more, I can show you that there's that little bar again, sort of the bar that you see in a traditional bar increase. So I didn't really correct anything. I tightened it up, obviously, but I reintroduced the bar. So. Um, end result, if you don't mind these little holes popping up, you're going to get a really nice clean increase that doesn't have that bar in it. Next up, we talked about the Icelandic wool that Schoolhouse Press sells, and it comes in these really interesting looking um, cakes. And um, you can tell just by looking at it, it's really fluffy, it's very hairy, it's kind of rustic, almost lopy ish and it's unspun, meaning there is no twist in this fiber. And if you look closely at this long strip, if you just tug on it, it, it drifts apart. Magically, the way that it's prepared, when you knit with it, it's pretty darn tight. I'm pulling and stretching as hard as I can and this is not coming and flying apart. So it's a pretty durable wool. It's very warm and I wouldn't say that this is a right next to the skin sort of wool, but if you live in really cold climates and you need stuff that's going to keep you, you know, keep keep your temperature nice and toasty, 
this is going to be the thing for you. So this is the unspun Icelandic wool that comes in these groovy little cakes that Schoolhouse Press sells. This particular color is denim, which I was really drawn to on the website. Finally, we talked about the moccasin sock. And the way that the moccasin sock is um, produced is you start at the top of the sock and then you just do a series of knit two, purl two ribs until you get down to here. And at this point, you put stitches on waist yarn and leave them there. And you continue knitting back and forth on the instep of the sock. So you're knitting back and forth here, back and forth, doing knitting and purling and keeping the pattern down the entire instep of the sock. Once you reach this point here, about two inches from the toe, you switch to your alternate color and you do a series of decreases on either side of dividing these stitches into thirds. So there's a third here, a third here, a third here, and you decrease down to the very um, end of the toe here. And then you work around the sole picking up stitches all the way around here and then you start knitting around and around and around and at some point you do a series of decreases to start shaping the front of the toe here and then you do a series of decreases back here to start shaping the heel and you can you keep on knitting around and around and around and then at another point you do another series of decreases and then you knit around and then you graft invisibly the bottom here. Now the groovy thing about the moccasin sock is that the knitting that you did all around here can be unraveled once a hole develops and you could pick up stitches and then re-knit the whole thing over as you need it. So it's a really wonderful uh, and frugal construction that allows you to keep the other part of the sock intact and just replace the sole. If you would like to find the moccasin sock in other places, there are three that you can look. The first is in the Knitter's Almanac. And in this, Elizabeth Zimmerman has projects for each month of the year. But the project for November is the moccasin sock. So the pattern is in there. It's also in another publication, Knitting Around. And in Knitting Around, it is Chapter 1, Moccasin Socks. So, very beginning. And another wonderful supplement to this book is Knitting Around with Elizabeth Zimmerman and Meg Swanson, the DVD. It's over six hours of material on three DVDs. And all three of these are available at your local yarn shop and on schoolhousepress.com. So that wraps us up for our very first Fiber Beat video supplement. Thanks so much for joining us. If you want to find any of the Schoolhouse Press books, tools, or fiber, you can find them online at schoolhousepress.com. And if you'd like to enter our very first contest for a copy of the Moccasin Sock Pattern plus two skeins of Quebecoise wool, you can do that by answering a simple question. How has Schoolhouse Press changed your knitting life? You can leave the answer to that question on fiberbeat.com or you can leave a comment in the Fiberbeat Ravelry forum. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Fiberbeat.